So good morning everybody, uh, my name's Kim and uh, welcome to Discover the Wild. Uh, I work at the Chochu Wildlife Park and we are looking at our billabong this morning. So if you don't know what a billabong is, a billabong is a fairly still body of water, uh, generally seen uh, alongside river systems where a part of the river has been cut off from the main flow. Uh, uh, you find some river systems don't have a very good flow during our dry season, so it will dry up into a series of pools. So these pools are usually fairly deep and they hold water all year round. You also get some water bodies, also called lagoons, but some people still call them uh, billabongs. Uh, and these are fairly shallow, circular depressions found around the edges of floodplains and other low-lying areas. These are often quite shallow and do dry up towards the end of our dry season. Uh, but in any case, uh, billabongs are usually only found in low-lying areas. You'll not find billabongs up in hills and mountains. Those are lakes. Uh, but billabongs are part of our wetlands and wetlands around the world are incredibly important for the animals that they support, including our pelicans here. Right, hey, let's feed these birds. So what we're looking at here today is the Australian pelican. Pelicanus conspicuatus. It's found right across Australia from Tasmania right through to the north. Uh, and also seen as far afield as uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, New Zealand, Fiji, and Christmas Island. They're normally only seen this far away when there's a drought happening in Australia. Uh, and also, these birds are a bit more common in our southern states than they are up here, but they are here and can be found in pretty much anywhere where there is an open waterway in our wetlands. So rivers, billabongs, and also along the coastline. Now, like I said, it's the only species of pelican that's found in Australia, uh, but it's one of eight found around the world. And ours is not the largest. That uh, record goes to the endangered Dalmatian pelican, which is found in parts of uh, Asia and Eastern Europe. So that one has, is the heaviest, however our pelican has the longest beak of any bird alive in the world today. And in the males, that can reach up to 50 centimetres in length, so half a metre. There's not, not a lot of difference between males and females. It's a bit hard to tell sometimes, but there's about a one and a half to two kilo weight difference, with the males being a little bit larger. So they generally sit about eight kilos in weight, and the females sit about five to six kilos in weight. Now I'm sure you'll agree the most defining feature of the pelican is the pouch underneath his beak. Now this is called a gula. Now contrary to popular belief, they do not store food in this pouch. They simply use it like a big scoop net. So they work together as a team they herd the fish into the shallows and then they'll all dive their heads underneath the water and grab a big mouthful of water and fish. Now that pouch in their beak is very stretchy. It's also very sensitive so they know exactly what's going on inside their beak and they can hold between 9 to 11 litres of water. So about your average size bucket. So what they do then is they have a beak full of water and fish they push their head down against their chest, push the water out and swallow the fish. Now what we feed our pelicans here are whiting and sometimes other types of fish. Now if you have a look at our whiting, all fish have spikes. So when the pelicans swallow the fish, they generally swallow it head first so those spikes go down nice and flat. So if they had grab hold of a fish, they'll turn it around inside their beak. Now these fish, like I said, are not very spiky. Uh, so sometimes they will eat them tail first, like that one did. <laughs> but I'm sure you've seen catfish before. Catfish are very spiky. These guys will eat catfish, albeit very carefully. Now on food, uh, they are what's called a piscivore. So a piscivore, uh, a piscivore's diet is about 90% fish. However, the other 10% can be made up of other things if they can't find any fish. So baby turtles, baby crocodiles uh, are on the menu. They've been known to take pigeons from parks and also attack little chihuahua dogs on beaches. So beware of the hungry pelican. That is a big beak, 
and they can swallow a fish the same length as their own beak. Now, if you have a look at the pelicans, they sit very high in the water. And they're also very particular about holding their wings up out of the water. Now we've got a couple of young pelicans here that we hand raised. And one of the oddest things about these guys is underneath their skin looks and feels like bubble wrap. So when you pick up a young pelican, all that skin crackles and crunches underneath your fingers. There is so much air underneath there. And there's a couple of theories for that. One is it makes them, uh, it, it helps to cushion their body as they're coming into land. They're a pretty heavy bird, so that bit of air does help to cushion that, cushion that stock on the water. The other theory is, is it makes them very buoyant, so they float on the top of the water. Now these guys have a very big wingspan, up to two and a half metres uh, across their wings. Uh, and the theory is if they were to get their wings waterlogged, they would not be able to get their bulk up off the water. So hence that buoyancy makes them sit very high and they hold their wings up very carefully out of the water to keep them dry. You'll notice there is a, uh, another bird hanging around just at the moment. This is a whistling kite. Now you've probably seen lots of these guys before along with their cousin, the black kite. They hang around our roads uh, picking up uh, carrion, uh, which is mostly from, sadly, roadkill, where people have hit animals on the road. However, they do a good job of cleaning up uh, that uh, dead material. So I have a fish here, and she will come in and pick up the fish on the wing. So we'll see if we can capture that. Here she comes. There she goes. She's got her fish, and she'll take that up and eat that up there. Alrighty, now pelicans need about a kilo of fish a day to sustain themselves. Here they don't generally get quite that much, but they are also not travelling as far as the say the wild ones would be, so they don't need as much food. There is also uh, little critters in the billabong that they eat as well, apart, apart from the possibly the freshwater crocodiles and turtles, but also there are prawns in amongst the weeds that they eat. Hey, so evolutionary wise, pelicans are quite old. Uh, they're thought to have started evolving about 100 million years ago during the dinosaur times. Uh, but we know that they've been on the planet in their current form, so how they look today, they've been in their current form for about 30 million years. And we know this because of a fossil that was found in the south of France, and it was only recently described in the last 10 years. Uh, and it was of a pelican's head, neck and beak. And uh, this pelican was actually a little bit smaller than these guys, but it shows that these guys have been around uh, in their current form as you see them, for at least 30 million years, which means that they have a good design and it has uh, this, their evolutionary design has uh, seen them through a lot of different climate change and changes over that 30 million years. Uh, and uh, it's a design that has worked well for them. So they have not had to change at all, which means in their, they're in what's called evolutionary stasis, which is quite rare amongst birds, as they are some of the fastest evolving creatures on the planet. So I just want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, tune in tomorrow and uh, hopefully you can learn some stuff about our awesome wildlife.